So I recently got challenged to a debate by this aboriginal dude on YouTube. Uh, he claimed that he has uh, this type of document that he could trace his so-called relatives back to this Native American woman. I'm going to go ahead and hide his name. Just know that he gave me this information and we're going to go over how to expose this whole called fake documentation that a lot of these aboriginal dudes are doing. Before we begin, thank you for um, tuning in. I've been quite sick lately, sounding a bit congested, but I'm all right. I'm feeling a little bit better now. I'm not going to give the aboriginal person's name out, but I might put it in the description box, if not in the comment section, because I'm not here to criticize the man, or I'm just here to criticize what he gave me as far as documents go. For all the people flooding my comments section in my videos claiming that I'm trying to make money off of Dane, I'm not. Most, all my videos are demonetized. I don't make a single dime off of YouTube. Um, it's just, I'm not, I don't have a hidden agenda. I'm not here to, I don't get paid like Dane. I don't sell merchandise. I don't make money off of you. And I don't plan to make money off of you in regards to any conspiracy theory. So that's just a false misconception some of you guys seem to have. In fact, most of my um, popular videos most of my popular videos aren't response videos. My least popular videos are actually response videos. I don't make a lot of, I don't get a lot of views. I don't get a lot of attention for my response videos, even though I think my response videos are really good. But that's just, you know, that's just that. All right, here's the so-called document of proof that his great, great, great grandmother was a Native American. There's not much you can really learn from this document. Most of documents like this at least have about seven or eight things, you know, dates, what what have you, correct. Now the profile manager is Pamela Miller. Um, that's very sus suspect. Um, sources are William Varner purchased a full-blooded, uh, you know, Native American from John Varner. Okay, that's interesting, but where's that coming from? Where's the source coming from? So there's a lot of red flags. So I went on and did, um, couple databases, one from the National Archives or archives.com. And we're going to go check and see um, where this Rose Vonner is. There's a Roseanne Vonner right there, but the dates don't line up. Um, all right, we're going to go ahead and click on this. All right, so her name's Ann Walker. And this seems like the person we're looking for. It doesn't say Rose Vonner, but she's listed as black. <laughs> uh, spouse name is James Walker, not William Vonner. Interesting keeping house okay um, members of household was James Walker she was definitely a slave due to the dates all that um, let's see James Walker this is her husband 60 years old during the time of the census um, married spouse name is Ann Walker farmer uh, 58 years old Okay, so that's her husband listed under the census. View history. Okay, farmer. That's where he's from. Spouse is Rose Walker. Okay. All right, interesting. All right, now let's go to that other Rose Vaughner, 1927. This isn't the same woman. She's also black, uh, Negro. Um, born in South Carolina, members and household, definitely some Vaughners in there. Uh, maybe it's a cousin, who knows. All right, here goes the slave master in question. Oh, actually, let's go ahead and look at James Marion Vaughner. Okay. Now, this is the youngest son of Rose Ann Walker and William Lee Vaughner. Oh, okay. So that's his mom, that's his father. So his father was the slave master, his mother was the slave. Okay, 822. Roseanne Walker, still no sign of Rose Ann Vaughner. That's because they probably were never married. Um, interesting. I uh, said she died around 1900. Yep. Okay, let's go back. James Mary Vaughner is the youngest son of Rose um, Ann Walker and William Vaughner. And this happens to be the person that gave me this document claims that's his uh, great grandfather. Okay, 
as you can see, no Roseanne Vaughner, just Roseanne Walker. They were never married with peers like it. Now, this is interesting. James Marvin Walker is actually the same person as James Marion Walker. He's also listed as a mulatto um, farm laborer. This is the same exact person as James, um, James Marion Vaughner. So that gives me a, that. So if you if it makes sense out of it, James Marion Walker or Marvin Walker was named after his uh, surrogate father, James Walker. But his, but you see how he changed his last name to James Marion Vaughner. So probably around the end of the, uh, during the reconstruction period, he changed his name to his uh, slave owner, his biological father's last name, which is, it makes sense due to inheritance. And, you know, that was probably a very popular name around that area. I mean, a whole town is named after Vaughner Town, so that, that makes sense. So James Marion is the same as James Marvin Walker. He took the last name. Well, he was born James Marvin Walker after his, um, I guess her, Rose's husband, who happened to be one of the slaves on the plantation, I'm, I'm just going to assume. And he died in 1860. William Vaughner. See, that's what I'm saying. Like James Marvin or James Marion Vaughner was born in 1856. He was about four or five years old when his father died. Now, he probably was named under the will because slaves were possessions to the master. So he definitely was named under the will. But as you can see, Roseanne Walker's name never changed. So that's a bit misleading in the document saying formerly Walker when she died with that last name and she was never married to William L. Vaughner. So right then and there, this document's already false. That WikiTree document's false. And archives, and this is the same databases that you um, Dan Calloway uses. He uses National Archives. Don't don't get it twisted. Now he might do some shady stuff involving national. I mean National Archives and all that stuff, but he uses his database. So here we go. Here's how I'm looking for it, gathering my information. Anybody can do this. Uh, I, I did the free trial of archive, so anyone's free to look all this information up. You're going to find the same information. Um, there's no. You don't have to be an expert. In fact, I think it should be best that people who actually have genealogy experience and actually know how to research these type of databases who aren't um, who have the right credentials who aren't shady who don't have like some type of underlying um, you know method or agenda yeah I think you know anybody can do this but you know it's just you have a lot of shady people um, forging these documents or giving out false information all right, James Marion Vaughner. All right, that's him. So we're just basically going over this with archives. I did also an Ancestry.com uh, census records. I looked it up on Ancestry. It's pretty much the same information. It's just different uh, database, but it runs through archives, so it's all pretty much the same. You know, it's kind of interesting since Dane always talks about how we don't we can't trust the U.S. census records, but best believe he's using the census <laughs> records and documentation that never really occurred to me how you know how stupid that is so like i said james marvin walker was born that was his birth name he was named after his surrogate father um not his biological father you know he, he couldn't take the last name of his slave owner and it's kind of interesting because how the hell were native american slaves again around this time you know I thought the slave trade for Native Americans was abolished at the latest 1750 I could be wrong but you know how was he a slave and we all know why Native Americans made horrible slaves at least most of us should know all right so I looked up Eliza Walker like I think I think I'm starting to think that all the children that Rose had with William Vaughner they changed their name they all changed their name to Vaughner um, probably a decade or so after his death. But she's also listed as a mulatto. And this is probably part of, this is pro probably evidence of rape culture, of rape between slave master and slave. Because I'm pretty sure Rose wasn't married, but she did produce a lot of children with 
with William. William was also not married, which is interesting. He's, he's not listed as um, wedding anybody, so he's probably a loner. But this definitely, this is probably evidence of uh, what you would consider rape. And this is probably some evidence that a lot of black people like to hide in their family and their genealogy. That we don't want to accept the fact that there's rape in between our, our, our history and our documents. But this is probably proof of that. Uh, this is definitely not proof of a Native American ancestry connection. So I went to Wikistree and I looked up James Marion Vaughner and I found some interesting things about who produced this document. And as a learner, as somebody who's trying to investigate where your sources come from, this is very hands-on information I'm giving you. To go Eliza again. Um, so I went to see, so the profile manager is Bernard Middleton. That's interesting. Now, this is a problem. Personal recollections of events witnessed by Bernard Middleton II. Okay, he was born in the 1980s. This man um, died in 1856. So how the hell is that even? How can that be a source? <laughs> all right, so look at all this. Gola bloodline, indigenous. You got all these Native American tags. It's probably one of the brothers from the We Ain't African movement, as you can see. Okay, but however, look at this. DNA tested. This man was actually DNA tested. He had his white chromosome, mitochondria, he has all that. Now, I can't access it because I don't have AncestryDNA.com. I don't have a membership to that. However, I have been DNA tested and I do have a GEDmatch.com membership. So here's Bernard Middleton's uh, GED match kit number, his user lookup. All this is right here. And this is what I found, which is going to be funny as hell. This man is African as fuck. Look at this shit. This man is, wow, this man is what, on, okay, I'm using several databases from G, GED Match, and they're going to have several databases, and every single database that I'm using, he's going to have at least 90% African ancestry or, com, or genetic composition. This man is more West African than most African Americans. I mean, truth be told, the Gola do say they come from West Africa. They're pretty much, a lot of, a lot of Gola people do claim that they come from West Africa. This man right here is 76% at West African. And he definitely has some Native Americans showing up, 2%, which is pretty average of most African Americans. As you can see, this is him. The kit number is right below the Eurogenes K19, and this is the Eurogenes database. So this is picking up all the reference populations in this database. And here is, um, now this one uh, has African, American Indian, as you can see, he's a he's very African, very more African than most African Americans, which is funny. As you can see, this is Bernard Middleton. He matches with other African Americans, so you could tell he's very African here. Um, just get DNA tested, you'll see all this um, GED match. Um, you can verify it yourself. All right, here's another database. This is uh, Ancestry.com National Archives. It's run through the same thing. Uh, as you can see, very meticulous document documentation. This is showing, um, I guess, uh, birth and all the other stuff around the census. All right, so here you go. Race black, you know, typical stuff is the same. Now, the only difference between Ancestry.com and uh, Archives is the name. As you see, somebody edited the name. And if you click on an edit, you can see who edited the name. Now, it's not going to give you an exact name, but it's showing you the person's ID number. So that lets you go, that lets you know right there that someone can come in and edit the names off some of these documents, even if they're not the actual names these person, these people actually went by. Is it possible Roseanne Varner changed her name sometime during her life? Maybe, but the census isn't showing that. Now, in college, as a history major, I actually used to transcribe uh, documents like this. So I'm very familiar with all this. It's very difficult for a lot of people to transcribe, you know, old documents and what have you. But this is it's pretty much the same, same thing as archives. Um, as you can see, all the information is the same. Somebody did go in and edit that, that name. Um, I would assume it was probably maybe a family member, somebody who's, you know, part of the Vonner family. And we're going to get into the whole Vonner town and all the other stuff. Um, eventually but yeah as you can see now this is uh, James Marion's daughter um, 
as you can see, I could probably go in and edit myself, but I'm not going to do that because that would be <laughs> that be foraging. But you see, anyone can do it. So this is the other Rose Vonner. This is actually James Marion Va uh, Walker's or Vonner, whatever. This is his daughter. As you can see, she's actually black. So that means one of her parents had to have been black as well, unlike her father, who happened to be a mulatto. You see what I'm saying? So let's even hypothetically say that somehow her great grandmother was Native American. And does that really make you Native American now? No, not really. But that's just being hypothetical. I'm pretty sure she was black as well. But there we go. This is basically all I'm going to do for all this stupid shit. All right, so this this document, this WikiTree document, is deceptive in more than one way. Uh, first of all, it's coming from WikiTree, which is not a credible site. Uh, anybody can come in and edit a WikiTree site. It's just like Wikipedia. Now, there's always ways to fact check a Wiki page or fact check a WikiTree site, and that's exactly what I just did. Now, uh, it's, it's deceptive in another way, as that Ann Walker was never married to William Vaughner. Um, she did not marry. She did marry James Walker. Uh, she was actually born Anne Brown, which I don't believe she had a last name at her birth. So I guess it was Brown that was listed. That was from another document, I think Ancestry.com. I didn't. She also has somebody edit her her name in Ancestry.com, and you can always click on the edits when you go to these sites to see who edited something. And the edits can be traced; they're traceable. So you can always you can always might calculate or see where foul play may have um, came into play. And I, there's been a lot of foul play with a lot of these so-called aborigine documents because I can't find I still can't find a Native American um, ancestor here. There's n there's no way you can trace that with with this. Now, if I didn't know any better, I would think that Dane is actually fabricating or forging some of these documents. Perhaps he's giving you a link to his book. And in his 92 page book, which I found quite funny, it's only 92 pages, he's actually giving you a fake site, a dummy account or a dummy site. And he's actually putting you or he's giving you a Native American tribe that's closer to your region of where you live at. So let's say you're from Dallas, Georgia. He's going to make you a creek. You see what I'm saying? So I think there's some foul play going on with whole, the whole Dane document scheme. And I think that Dane's obviously a grifter. He's somebody who who knows who reads people's psychology. He's really a psychologist, he, and he sells you false information so he can make money off of you. He's basically a con artist. He's a scammer, and I feel like that's actually what's going on here with this whole fake documentation thing with the Aboriginal movement. And it's actually very legal. And yeah, it's illegal to forge federal documents or census records. So, Dane, you better be safe with what you're doing, man. As you can see, this is Dane's site. He has a lot of conspiracy theory articles, man. If you guys believe this shit, y'all got to go to the hospital and check your, your heads. This is all bullshit, man. This is all conspiracy. When you start your video with an untold truth, you know you're in it for some bullshit, for some fiction, for some good-ass fiction, but it's still fiction. Now, here's how you catch the grifters. Look at, look at this. Get money. Look at this shit. Donate to me an hour with Alex. You see this shit? They're doing this shit in plain sight. And they, you can catch all these commenters on Dane's videos. Now, here's an interesting thing I had to go back to the census and all this. Look at all these, uh, look how much these uh, slaves were worth. Shit, with three years training, they're, they're worth as much as a house, these slaves. That's crazy. That's why this institution of slavery is so important to the economy of the South. I'm going to leave some of this right here just to show proof of, you know, blacks being sold into slavery for all you slave deniers and all you fake wannabe Native American dumb motherfuckers. And yeah, I'm going to call you out. I'm tired of this. This is this is very obscene. This is very absurd. And this is very, very upsetting to your ancestors. Very disrespectful, may I add. And for all you grifters, for all you trying to get money off of people, trying to fake people out of their own money and their own wealth. Um, you guys deserve to be put on blast. Every single one of you. The horrors our people had to endure, how to suffer. But we can't deny what happened to us. 
Now, Dane's obsession with indertion servitude, this always got rubbed me the wrong way because this was always kind of stupid, in my opinion. Um, as you can see, the definition doesn't add up to anything Dane's telling you guys of indertion servitude. And he's always talking about 12 years of slave, but what about 100 years of indertion servitude? Where is the documentation, Dane, for indertion servitude? Where is it, huh? Show us the documentation of people being on contract, people getting out of their contract, and how, many, how much time did these so-called aborigines serve time with their indentured servitude? And how the fuck did they get indentured servitude in the first place? That's not how, none of this shit makes any fucking sense. This is the hustle. This is the side hustle. Look at all this stuff. You click on this link, it's going to go straight to your book. But he's always telling you to do your own research, right? Dane Alex Jones. Oh, this is why he tells you to do your research. Because when you run into a wall and you can't find no Native American relative, oh, there goes that book for $35. So Dane's information is coming from the United States Congress, Library of Congress. Hmm. Dane sounds kind of like a Fed. It wouldn't kind of make sense how... He is kind of dividing our community with this nonsense. But that's actually interesting. So he doesn't trust anything from the government, yet his content's coming from the government? Hmm. Y'all aborigines seem to be very possessive over your content. It's not very Native American-like. How, how am I more Native American-like than you guys? Actually, for anybody who wants to copy this video, paste it on your channel, you are free to do so. This video is probably going to be monetized too because I have no copyright claims. So I'm allowing anybody who wants to use this video, you are free to use it. Absolutely free to use it. No hidden agenda, no pull of strings. If you look at it, they all move the same. These aboriginal guys, they all move the same. It's all a con, guys. It's just, you guys got to get let this shit go. We're not Native American. Uh, speaking of which, why is it so that every time someone comments on my channel about Dane, they say, well, you just following the white man, but Dane be using white people as sources, just like this guy in one of his videos. And also this guy who happens to look like the guy before. Each source is unnamed. So we don't even know who the fuck this guy is, this white man portrayed in Dane's videos. Now I saw this video, I think it's like white people tell the truth or some shit. And in that video, it actually plays off like a social experiment. And Dane's passing that off as common knowledge. Like, you could tell that it's fucking staged. Like, this guy is just trying to create a social experiment about trying to make white people feel bad about, you know, them taking natives off land or them, you know, hurting black people and all this other shit. It's pretty much just white shaming in a way. But who is this, guys? Tell me, Dane supporters. Tell me, Dane Calloway. Like, literally, who the fuck is this guy? Like, we have to ask ourselves that question when we look at videos like this. The so-called untold truths or um, the hidden history. You guys got to understand where your shit's coming from. And Dan uses this guy a lot. This guy looks like the guy I showed previously. And the only difference is, I think he has an American accent. The other guy has a British accent. But as you know, Dane pays off actors all the time. So it wouldn't be surprising if this is the same fucking person. Just being honest. Now, I don't see... Now, he could also try to do it in a way where he can be like, well, you know, I was just trying to make you think. I never said all this information was correct. So he's he has... I could tell he has a defense going on just in case people do find out how his con actually operates and how it works. But this is definitely a con. Like what Bill Mayer, Mayer said, nowadays sensitivity is more important than truth. Feelings are more important than facts. Don't allow your personal feelings to enslave you. If this isn't a con, I don't know what is. He's showing signs of desperation. And you can tell he is fearful. If Dane is going to be contributing to this wacky conspiracy theory, we as the audience, we as the viewers or critics need to see how he does it. Methodology is important. I must repeat that. All right, we don't need to buy a book or a t-shirt or pay his PayPal account or, contrib or contribute donations to his Patreon or do all this and that in order to know. Truth be told, he could make a lot more money showcasing his methods, proving those methods on tours across the nation and country and can still do it. But why doesn't he do it? Why doesn't Dane do those things? Because Dane will get his ass humiliated the moment he tries to do it in front of people who actually do research. People who actually know how to think. 
So we all weren't slaves, huh, you aborigine fuckers? Yet yeah, the entire cuisine is based off cooking that parts the slave master didn't want. So slavery definitely never happened. So slave, so collard greens was real Native American food, huh? Dane comes off as an Asian, a government agent that is here to set off confusion in the black community in case talks of reparations actually come through. This indentured servant or contracted worker, indentured servants sign contracts basically stating when their work would be finished, they were released from their services. Where is the documentation and proof of a contract agreement between blacks and Europeans, Dane? It would appear our services last over hundreds of years, so that would definitely not be indentured servitude. What we were, 100 years in a dirty servant, that is basically still a slave, as I've already went over earlier. Entire legislation, political gains, entire debates were on the institution of slavery. An entire war was fought over the institution of slavery. Entire state lines and states were established over the institution of slavery. Abolish, uh, abolitionists who fought against it, slave accounts, those are facts that have documentation, Dane. Where is your real documentation, Dane? Using some videos with some creepy music and, and telling people this is the way it really was when you're not really showing people the facts, the evidence that surrounds it. That's not, that's not being honest. That's being dishonest, Dane. Dane Jones. As far as the Vonertown thing, Vonertown was basically a land where you had indigenous Native Americans Africans and Europeans and for some reason some of them actually intermix with each other but still the, the source is still misleading because you can't trace a Native American ancestor to that person based off the documents from the census records you just can't and it also is misleading because there's not that many Native Americans in Vonertown and on top of that it's still it's just not enough to connect um, that person to that Native American ancestor. Um, and it makes sense, Vondertown would, you know, some of it's Indian land, most of it's not. So the person who claimed and put up that wiki tree, the information is false, as is with all this other aboriginal bullshit. So just take it with a grain of salt. African slaves are very versatile in the South Carolina region. Um, they could do a lot of things Europeans couldn't do. They're very versatile, and if you read this information I'm giving you, you'll fully understand why that was the case. And um, Africans were very well wanted. They're very well unique, and without them, possibly the colonization part in America probably would have failed. Based off all this, I wouldn't trust Dane or any of these aboriginal dudes with my first name, let alone my whole information or my genealogy or my family information. Stop giving them that shit.